This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. In today's episode, we continue with the transfer of training with Book 3. In Chapter 3, these are Sections 2 and 3. Section 2 To Desire Wholly is to Be. Friend, I just read about some guy having this having his awakening. Certainly, I am glad that anyone can have such an experience. But I have a question. I keep hearing that there is nothing to do but remember. There is no doubt the experience of just remembering seems to be very elusive. I also keep hearing that it all comes together when we finally give up seeking for the light. Once we have had a taste of that light... Giving up seeking it is unthinkable. I know that the desire for it is of key importance. But how can one desire something so much and not try for it? David To desire wholly is to experience the desirelessness of creation, of being. To try is to make an effort to achieve something that is believed to be missing. Seeking and searching are thus activities of lack. Whereas in accepting atonement or correction, the search has vanished. The search itself was the sickness. The experience of the present moment is the peaceful contentment of forgiveness. The seeking was the stress. The tranquil surrender or release offers only relaxation and divine ease. The taste of the light is always a present experience. Only the attempt to place the taste in the past or future is erroneous. Remembering the present and forgetting the past go hand in hand. It cannot be difficult to be as one is now. But the belief in linear time introduces the illusion of the necessity of change. What could it mean to change our mind about our mind, but to accept our changeless oneness? Desire is not a matter of degree. Nor is our one self in God. Simply forgive the trying to be anything. Being is beyond the concept of change. Even vigilance vanishes in the holy instant, for there is nothing to be vigilant against in the full experience of now. I rejoice in the living moment. Now is wholeness true and happily wholeness has no opposite. And now we have section 3 of chapter 3 of book 3. Spiritual practice is nothing without integrity. Integrity is a symbol of an integrated or whole mind. A mind in which there is no conflict and nothing is out of accord. Integrity follows from honesty and honesty follows from trust. By honesty, I mean consistency, and by trust, I mean trust in the Holy Spirit. It is impossible to believe in the ego and have trust, honesty, or integrity. Those who claim to teach or follow the simple teachings of forgiveness in the Bible and A Course in Miracles are called to expose and release the ego and judgment. This exposure and release of ego and of judgment is a path to enlightenment or salvation that succeeds only through complete forgiveness. There is no partial forgiveness as there is no partial healing. The mind which seeks to compromise between the teachings of forgiveness 
and the self-image concepts of the ego is asking for the impossible. Truth is beyond options. There can be no compromise in the gateway of forgiveness that leads to divine love. The belief system of greed, possession and control must be released entirely for trust, integrity and honesty to be realized. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters and you cannot see two worlds. The mind which attempts to possess has denied its spiritual reality and the truth of our being. Many come to Christ and say, Lord, Lord, but their hearts are filled with desires for control and possession. Christ says, Depart from me, I know you not. Christ lives in God, and God, in God, there are no illusions. Keep not one concept apart from the light within, or you have raised an idol image in belief and have blocked the light of love from awareness. Give away the belief in possession and control and be happy. Recognize the integrity of whole mind. Pristine, innocent, pure and bright with love. You shall know them by their fruits. Love is neither boastful nor proud. For love accepts itself as one with its creator. To be humble in the Lord is to know one's true identity in God. Pure magnitude. Without consistent purity of thought, there is nothing to spirituality except a show of grandiosity. This show is but deception. Be humble in God's love by releasing every scrap of possessiveness and pride and by accepting the glory of I am as God created me. The fruits of forgiveness and mind-watching are pure joy. Accept the gifts of the Spirit now. Be not tempted by specialness and the littleness of form when the content of Spirit is available for the asking. Behold the good news of the kingdom now.